design Volt 5. ENC 2 liner replaces the Volt 4, which was the original first ENC 2 liner that came out. Air Design are the first to bring out their second edition of the ENC 2 liner. I've flown it on a few days in a good variety of conditions. We're going to call this a kind of early impressions. So. This is the Volt 5 here. Well, the air design's build quality in general is excellent, really, really good. So when you look at the glider, it just looks really well made and looks like it's uh, durable and going to last. Although it is a light glider, so for a light glider, it looks like due to the construction, it's going to last pretty well. You can see just by this package, it's very compact. So that's a real, just like the Volt 4, just like its predecessor. And one of the big advantages of this is it's light and compact. You still do need to look after it, so you still need to pack it well and they supply it with this 50-50 concertina bag. Yes, yeah, so it's worth, you still want to get your rods all straight and pack it away. You can't just, I mean, you can just stuff it away, but that's not good for the wing. So because it's got a light construction, if you're flying somewhere, it's very harsh terrain and very rough and weight is not really an issue for you, then I guess you might be looking at a standard weight, more robust glider. But again, it's down to how much time you spend with the glider on the ground. If you're flying, in places where it's grassy or it's not quite so harsh and rough then it's it's great for that so for flying in the alps flying in the uk and places like that it's fantastic i don't think there's any issue with the light lightweight construction but that's something that you might be thinking about risers are 12 mil webbing style risers i think they're kevlar reinforced and they're very nice and easy to handle i think they're a really nice optimum design they've got all they need to make for example, like the acceleration that the tips don't over accelerate, etc. So they've got all the bits they need on there for that, but without being over complex. So I find them easy to handle on the ground. The lines are fully unsheathed, as you'd expect for this class of glider. So it's a two liner and uh, the lines are all unsheathed, except for as usual, just the main brake lines. I've had from light and sort of variable winds through to quite strong Glider inflates easy, the way it comes up is very progressive and predictable and controllable and I found it really easy to manage. It's a lightweight glider so lightweight gliders tend to lift up and flap around so they require a bit more managing than a standard weight glider if you're not used to that. Also because of the all the rods, the nitinol rods in it which shape the glider really well and help with the inflation, um, the glider does catch the wind and want to come up and fly but not, not overtly so it's actually relatively easy to manage, even easier just feels slightly more sorted on the ground than the Volt 4. The glider feels to me just a bit more playful and easy to manage in all, all conditions. One of the key things compared to its predecessor is that the stall point is, is kind of more, more clear and obvious. The brakes firm up more obviously. They don't, it's not heavy, but they clearly firm up. It was a little niggle I had with the Volt 4. Its stall point was a little bit on the vague side but that was really niggling and I think the Volt 4 was still fine for the class but the Volt 5 I think now no pilot who's flying the right this level of glider should have any issue with it and should be accidentally stalling or spinning the glider so that the stall point is just that right balance of it's like really obvious you can tell exactly where it is this is both coming into stalling it down on the ground and I did several tests of the stall and spin point in the air and it's very very obvious Taking off, even when the conditions got a bit lighter and there wasn't so much lift, the glider sits really nicely planted above your head and lifts you off. So to take off, if you've got a bit of a tricky takeoff and it's a bit shallow or something like that, it lifts off really nicely. The glider has a very good glide and so it lifts off nice and easy. So easy takeoff. The brakes are a little on the long side, not overtly so, but they're not short. When I'm flying with the Volt 5, same as the Volt 4, hands in and then classic half wrap. That seems to be the ideal brake position for general handling. Straight away, the glider feels really solid and cohesive. It doesn't have, it's not the kind of wing that snakes and moves around. The aspect ratio is very slightly less than its predecessor. On the rear risers, there's, there's a good connection to the glider. You have a good feeling through them. I say that because it does vary with the gliders. They, they don't all feel the same. Some feel kind of a bit feel very light and a bit vague and some feel sort of you've got a good sort of connection there but it's kind of, it can be very heavy and stiff. And with the Volt 5 I think they're kind of moderate so the pressure is moderate 
just slightly on the firmer side. They're certainly not very light and they're not heavy, um, but there's a very good connection to the glider. I felt really comfortable, even as it started getting windier and choppier today, using the bar and then carrying on flying and using the rear risers. They're not the lightest, so some other, some other gliders have a bit lighter systems that's a bit easier to work, but there is a very good feeling of connection and they work really well. Similar to its predecessor, the Volt 4, in that it's moderate, moderately agile. It's not very agile and it's not slow. I think it might have, I do think that the, the brakes feel just a little bit more precise. Um, there's a bit more precise precision and a little bit more like quicker to react, a bit more responsiveness than its predecessor. But it's got a similar nature. So, so a pilot flying a Volt 4 is going to feel very, very at home flying a Volt 5. To me, the, the Volt 5 feels like it's the Volt 4 and it's kind of an evolution of that. Some of the C-Class gliders that have a bit more agility that are kind of just a bit tighter and things like that. But then there are some others that are less agile and you kind of want to turn around. But I am pleased to say that I think compared to the Volt 4, the, the Volt 5 just turns just a little bit nicer, just a bit tighter. Still turns very flat and climbs really well. That was a, a strong point with the Volt 4 as well. It climbed really well in light and weak conditions. Flying in strong conditions, then I recommend to load it up and fly it heavier. Um, I think that will, one, the sink rate's really good, and two, that's going to make the handling for, for turning into those strong punchy calls, it's going to work better. So yeah, I think that'll work out. But flying it in weak stuff, you can fly it low, low in the weight range, and yes, it does make the handling a bit slower, um, but it actually still copes with it fine. The wing feels fine. It doesn't feel wrong. Like some gliders, when you fly them light loaded, just, just don't feel right. I think the feedback is moderate. It's not a very feedbacky glider and it's not very dampened. If I was going to say anything, I might put it very slightly on the dampened side. So what that means is it's, it doesn't give you lots of feedback to feel everything that's going on with the air, but gives you plenty enough feedback. And at the same time, when it gets strong and punchy, it's not giving you too much feedback. So it's, it's a good balance of feedback. Talking about speed at trim, it feels like gliding around with all the other gliders, the trim speed feels good. It's not sort of particularly super fast and it's not slow. I think for the class, it's competitive and it's there, it's gliding at a good speed. I think it's competing with the other sort of at least mid to higher C gliders in terms of its glide speed. It feels to me like the glide has improved a little bit from its predecessor. Accelerated, picks up speed really nicely. Uh, the key thing I'd say about it is one, the speed system is relatively light. And the other thing about it is that it picks up really good speed and the glider feels very, very solid and confident. And the speed system is very, very usable. It feels like they could have pushed the speed bar further if they'd wanted to. I feel like the Volt 5 is probably closer to the mid C category. I'm still going to put it just being erring on side of caution slightly above that. But I do think the pilot demands are a bit less than its predecessor and it's a very solid confidence inspiring uh, wing that's very cohesive. Pilot that's used to flying a mid-sea kind of three liner or two and a half liner is going to feel very very comfortable upgrading to the Volt 5 and they're going to get I think a significant and noticeable improvement in performance and that the advantages of a two liner. So the Volt 4, I felt like I had a bit higher pilot demands and a bit less performance. So there was kind of, you know, a little bit less to gain. You still had a good gain and you still, it's a nice progression from a three liner to a two liner. But I think with the Volt 5, it's offering an even better package for that, an even better step. Descent techniques, well, like the Volt 4, the Volt 5 does both classic big ears with the outer A's and they come in really nice and easy. They sit nice and stable. They don't flap about. They're effective. And when you let go, they start to peel out and you can pump them out to go out. So that's great. Again, like the Volt 4, the Volt 5 does tip stalls as well. So as usual with tip stalls, pretty physical to pull in. You really need to reach up. It's a good idea with both the big ears and uh, the B3s to put on a bit of bar first. So you go on your third half bar, then reach up. You need to, you need to do them firmly and positively otherwise it's not going to work and particularly with the the tip stalls it's a better idea to pull them in together if you pull them in one if you pull on one side then it's going to turn you off round to that side quite quickly so you're going to go off course so you really need to pull up get them and then pull out and down quite firmly and pull them in very effective the, the descent rate's slightly higher it's a bit higher than with the big ears they sit in very stable they're not flapping about and when you let go of them they just bang out. 
Well, I actually had a collapse today, like a real one, coming into land. So I'd been flying around, letting the glider doing its thing and just waiting for it to collapse. And it didn't. So through thermals and chop like that. And then coming, while I was coming into land, the wind was picking up. And I think there was a bit of a snotty, punchy thermal that came off. And I had a bit of a tip tuck. First of all, it's very collapse resistant. So I think you're going to have very few collapses on this glider. And the sort of pilot flying it should have very few collapses. Of course, all paragliders collapse eventually. But coming into land, I had this really windy, choppy thing. And I kind of was playing, messing about. And as I came out, the glider pitched up and I had a, I, I don't know exactly, but it was probably around a 30% collapse on that side. But it was a real non-event. The glider tucked and just popped out. Well, I feel like it's, well, the pilot demands, first of all, around the mid-sea, maybe slightly above. So it's a very accessible two-liner. I think the pilot demands are quite similar to the Bonanza 3. And I think it's probably got a bit better performance and better glide and speed, uh, at least as good a climb rate. I think then the Nova Codex pilot demands of that are lower. So the Nova Codex is still the lowest pilot demands of any two-liner I've flown by a reasonable amount as well. It's quite, not just like a hair, it's like mild, quite noticeably so. Codex definitely feels very solid, very, very solid and comfortable and reassuring. And the pilot demands of that are slightly below mid-sea, to give an idea. The other top performing um, high-end sea gliders like the Photon, the Arctic R, the X2C, the Phi Scala 2 still feel like they might have an edge in terms of performance but then their pilot demands are a bit higher although the X2C's pilot demands are similar they have a different uh, a very different feel about it I don't really have any negatives as such but you know things you might want to say could be slightly better or you could say to my taste I'd like it to be a little bit more agile on the handling, although I do think it's a bit better and more agility than its predecessor, so that's nice. And I never felt like I really had a difficulty turning with other paragliders and turning inside thermals. So that's the one thing I'd say I'd, I'd like it just a bit more agile, nippy handling, but I think that's my personal preference. A really good option for pilots who are looking to move to their first two-liner. Bear in mind, still consider the two and a half and three liners and actually some of them fly and perform really well. But for pilots who are moving up from the high B class, that's one category that will move across. And I think the Vault 5 is suitable as a first two-liner. For me, the main category of interest for this, similar to the Vault 4, is pilots who are already flying in the sports class or are flying quite a sort of high-end high B glider. So they're already flying a glider with sort of similar pilot demands, just a bit less. And then they're looking to go and get their first two-liner and progress it to there. That's a really ideal, this is an ideal glider for that. And it, pilots who also want something that's an all-rounder. The performance that it offers, it's, it's light and compact. So if you're a pilot that wants to go cross-country flying and, and do some hike and fly and volbiv, or you just where you live and where you are, you have to walk up to take off and you want something light, then it's, uh, then it's a fantastic option for that. I think it's great. And I feel, feel like it's a very sorted all round option. As always, you can find loads of great gear on flybubble.com. Go over to our website, check out. We've got a whole huge range of gliders, harnesses, reserves, helmets, instruments, all that other stuff, all that lovely stuff on there. And go and check it out. As well as new stuff, we do used gear. So have a look on there. And we also offer part exchange and package deals. We offer expert buying advice through our Flybubble match service. Well, hope you're having great flights, uh, have fun out there, and look forward to seeing you in the next video!